Okay, so let, let's go ahead and and jump into this uh, discussion. So you know, you and I, of course, we we met through a mutual friend uh, a little while back, not too long ago, and you know, we we pretty much hit it off uh, instantaneously. You, you're in the financial services sector. I'm in the financial services sector, and so um, I'm happy to to have you as a guest. And, uh, you know, just for, I know you and I have chopped it up a bit behind the scenes, but just for the viewers, listeners, give us a brief synopsis of James Laster. To tell me, tell us a little bit about your background and kind of a synopsis of where you started versus where you are today. Um, quick synopsis. Um I graduated from North Carolina Central University out of Durham, North Carolina. And it, my, my journey began really there because when I graduated from there, I graduated as part of a triad program. So I'm one of the few people, I took a course at Carolina, a course at Duke, a um, course at State, and of course I got my uh, degree from North Carolina Central. And when I graduated, I graduated with a degree in education, degree in performance, and a minor in contract law. So I say all of that to say I, I left college and became an educator. And then I became an administrator, right? And I will never forget, never, ne never forget when uh, it was the end of the year, going into my fifth year teaching. And I remember Tom Crotty, I, I never forget that name. I tell everybody about Tom Crotty. And the reason why I tell people about Tom Crotty, because I remember his retirement celebration where I was in the copy room when they printed his certificate, they gave him a cup and a pen, 28 years of service as a school teacher. And that's what he got. And later on that day, I remember him talking about uh, my hometown. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. And he was talking about a place as a musician I used to perform for weddings at. It's called Arlie Gardens. Look it up. You can look it up. Ar Arlie Gardens. And he confessed that he was happy that his daughter was getting married. However, he did not have enough money to chip in for his daughter's wedding. So it was at that time right there, it was time for a career change. And I wanted to be a principal, but I found out that a principal would only get paid eighty nine dollars to $92,000 a year at that time. Yeah. Yep. So how did I end up here? Is that I remember helping not only family members, not only friends, but teachers, students, and, and, and their parents. You know, it was very discouraging to me for me to do all that work, get some students into uh, the college. But then they're back home a year or two years later because of financial difficulties. So it made me sick to my stomach. And make a long story short, I just jumped in, uh, got licensed, got certified. And a lot of the mistakes that I've made personally or I've seen other people learn, uh, uh, make mistakes of, I jumped in. And that's how I am now serving as a resource to a lot of people. So uh, my claim to fame is I normally know the answer, but if I don't, I know who to go to. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, you, you were on an educational track, right? And then, as you mentioned, you know, unfortunately, uh, you, you quickly realized by way of somebody else's experience, the financial constraints that may come along going down the educational profession path. And then it kind of triggered your thought process to maybe, maybe I need to look elsewhere, look at some different avenues, and then you stumbled across the financial journey. And so, it, and you, you just kind of touched on it a bit, James, but uh, I want to go a little bit deeper into what, what were some of the, the, maybe one or two of the biggest drivers that sparked your interest in going down the pathway of financial services, aside from what you saw the assistant principal going through, was there any other triggers or drivers that sparked your interest to go down that path? <laughs> yeah, there are two. Um, that immediately come to mind. Uh, first and foremost, I've been married to my high school sweetheart right out of high school. Uh, now, 25 years, we're getting ready to celebrate 26 years in a, in, in, in a month. Congratulations. And, oh, thank you, man. Uh, she deserves a lot better, but she stuck with me. It's an investment, all right? <laughs> so uh, the, the, the deal is, is that I was seeing a lot of folks get divorced. And that scared the crap out of me because I love this girl and I love all three of my kids. So 
not only, you know, from a, a heart place, but from a financial place, divorce is not a good idea for anybody, right? Um, but the, the other biggest mover, I would say, I remember as a 12-year-old kid, um, I just got finished watching, uh, what was it, Airwolf and, and Knight Rider, my favorite shows in USA, and I remember- uh, Knight Rider was a good one. Tell me about it, right? <laughs> right, everybody, now we have talking cars, right? Yeah. Um, and I remember going to the kitchen, and when I looked over, I saw a family friend, and, and I couldn't tell whether that was sweat or tears causing her hair to stick to her face. And when I said, well, you know, as a 12-year-old boy, I said, hey, what's going on here? Are, are you okay? You know, talk, let's talk about it. And it was at that time right there, she pointed to three stacks of paper right in front of her. She's saying, well, this one right here says, um, this is how much money I have left after my husband passed away. This money right here is, is all of this right here, the stack of paper says this is due in 30 to 60 days. And this letter right here says I have a huge tax bill here and I don't know where it came from. And my mom right now is 32 years in geriatrics. I've seen a lot of things and it stemmed from that right there. I saw, I, I saw the tears. I saw the anxiety. I saw the pain. I didn't feel it, but I saw it and vicariously. As my mom helped this family friend walk through that whole scenario, staying out of the nursing home, keeping all of her funds that her husband left her being taken away, the adjustments with Social Security, how Medicare treated her, how she thought about Medicaid, the things she knew and didn't know, they all snowballed until I became a school administrator. And ever since then, when I'm talking to people, I have the unique ability to actually empathize with folks because I've walked through so many scenarios with people that my, my ears are a little bit different than the average wealth advisor or financial advisor, if you will. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, very interesting, James. So to, to piggyback off of that, how did you initially, okay, you're going down the, the path of the educational professional field. How did you initially get your foot in the door in a financial services realm? I became disabled. When, 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 okay. when I was disabled and I went through filling out all those forms, I went through, I went through going through my savings at a time, not being able to touch my retirement accounts. Um, and then looking into my retirement accounts and saw that um, I was in a very conservative fund and I wasn't in something that was appropriate to my age group, how long I was going to be working and so forth. And I had a lot of questions to ask. I went through uh, guilt, embarrassment, and shame and why I was disabled. And I was going through all of that. I still had folks reaching out to me and saying, hey, well, if I'm going to retire, if this is going to happen. This is, well, should we pull this money out of this college uh, This college." Uh, a fun. And then I had teachers come and visit me and say, well, James, you know, you're a stellar teacher. You got all these awards and all this good stuff, but you're really good at teaching people and talking people through their financial crisis. And it was at that time, that's where my lot in life and my purpose in life came to light is mm -hmm. I intentionally take the fear out of finances through education. So there are a lot of programs for people that they can get into. The problem is they don't understand the program. And most advisors, when they talk to their advisors, their advisors give them that advice and they don't see that advisor ever again. Mm -hmm. Many of my clients have direct access to me. Um, I, I just had a client uh, reach out to me about a program that uh, she's now in and it's, it's our proprietary is flow to grow. And she's asking about this program and as soon as I get done, I'm going to answer those questions. But the whole point of it is, is that's how I got here. By simply listening to people, answering their questions. If I didn't know the answer, tell people, hey, look, I don't know the answer, but I know who to go to. I know where to find that answer for them. And that's how everything just somewhat just sparked. It just, it just sparked. And now it's a raging fire, right? <laughs> because now we're nationwide. Our firm, I'm so proud of this. Our firm is now na uh, nationwide now, Right. And we're, we're now hiring agents nationwide. So I'm teaching, I, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving. And it's all um, in a way that is so cost effective because we're willing to give up a lump sum or a bunch of money right now 
so that we can service you for the next seven to 10 years. That's the whole premise of our, uh, of our company and of our mm -hmm. business plan. And everybody's on board. So this is, this is uniquely a movement that just started with education because they don't teach you this stuff in school. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. You know what, James, you touched on something that really sticks out for me and it, it makes me think about just life. Life is hard. You right. know, it, it, it's not a cakewalk. Uh, most of us are not born with a silver spoon in our mouth. And it's, it's so amazing to me how you know, I asked the question, how did you get your foot in the door in the financial services industry? And you mentioned tragedy, uh, becoming disabled. And it's just fascinating how you took what easily could have been an ho horrific, tragic event of your life. And you could have easily just went down do a downward spiral from that point. But instead, you found the strength to to fall into your purpose. And it's, it's, it's fascinating how uh, potential tragedy turned into probably the greatest opportunity, one of the greatest opportunities that have opened up to you during your lifespan and how you've taken that and turned it into finding your gift and becoming of service. That's the main thing, right? Becoming of service, serving up your gift to, you, to the universe because of that experience that you went through. And I just find that very fascinating. I commend you. What's even more fascinating about that though, is the only way to get out of tragedy that I have learned, that I've, that I've known. And I will say this from a position of strength. Um, I'm a federal benefits consultant. So I work with a lot of uh, retired military and, and so forth. I, I work with a lot of uh, uh, semi-pro and professional athletes as well. And if they dig deep into their inner strength, you find that inner strength comes from not yourself, but from somewhere else, from somebody else. Now, I unashamedly love my God. All right, I, I, I unashamedly. I don't push my faith onto anyone else, but I, I say that to, to bring this point. You got to give to receive. And when I was in some of my darkest moments in my darkest times, what kept me from falling deeper inside that hole is I thought about others. I, I, I thought about not only my wife, my kids, my mom, my grandmother, right? My grandmother's 86 years old. You don't give up. <laughs> you got a grandma who's 86 years old, right? You, you, you keep figuring out and, and you keep pushing. And when your purpose stops with you, your vision is too small. But when your purpose, you know, it starts and begins with, with others, okay, now we have a bigger, we're, we're on to something now because it's supposed to be for a third and fourth generation. And, and, and that's what we're all pushing for. And it's actually possible now. James, so check this out. You just said, when you became disabled, um, instead of sitting back and, oh, what was me mindset, you found the courage and the strength to flip that around and say, how can I be of service to others? And that is such a testament of strength because I've seen it in my own lineage. I see it around me all over the place and yeah, there's the COVID-19 pandemic, but there's also another pandemic that's been picking up steam over the past few years, in, in my humble opinion. And that is the, the victim mentality pandemic. Okay, I think far too often we go through crises in life and we want to point the finger at everything else. We want to blame our parents, our siblings, our friends, a bad business partner, the White House, the government, except the person in the mirror. And here's the thing, James, and as I'm sure you well, you are well aware, if you don't have the fortitude to take accountability, extreme accountability, you, you're basically forfeiting your power to do anything about your situation. 
<laughs> right? If you if you're suffering from the victimhood mentality, you're saying, okay, I'm in this this point in life because of outside factors that I had no control over. Then you're stuck. You take away all the power that you have internally to do anything about your situation. So I just want to commend you. You know, that really hits home for me, you know, because I, I'm, it, you know, you, me, and I'm sure a lot of people out there, we didn't grow up with a silver spoon in our mouth. And, and, and instead of complaining about the world and setting out to fix the world, how about start with cleaning up your own garage first, starting out your own room first. Focus on what's right in front of you and what you can directly control. And bit by bit, step by step, gradually, your situation will start to improve. What do you think? Well, everybody's a victim in some shape or form, right? And what I mean by that, that, that comes from a background of uh, psychology, um, marriage counseling that uh, I've been trained to do and so forth uh, and understanding both sides. And we're all victims of something in some shape or form or matter. We're all victims, right? So when I say we're all victims, we're in many cases, we're all self-diagnosed victims. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can't stop with the diagnosis. You got to get a prescription, right? And the prescription is education, right? So, so if you're watching your favorite TV show, your favorite movie, or your favorite game, whatever it may be, and you knew the outcome, you, you, if you knew the outcome, you're not like everybody else in the theater or the stadium, like, oh, who, oh, oh, because you know the outcome, right? So the way that our laws and our regulations are set up, there's an outcome depending on which route you take. Uh, Judge Leonard Howe, everybody talks about this guy. Uh, for example, he says, is, you're no more uh, of a better person or patriotic by overpaying in your taxes. And anyone could organize their, uh, their affairs in a manner where they're not overpaying in taxes. Well, how do you not overpay in taxes? Through education, right? So there's two ways to get that education, right? Either you're grown into it and, and you're born into it and you, you have rich friends, uncles, or cousins, or you talk to somebody who has worked for those people, <laughs> who has studied their books, who understands what the heck is going on, right? And, and, and here's a prime example. I have clients that are in Leesburg, Virginia, they are in Bethesda, Maryland. They are in Washington, D.C., and they are living in $1.5, $2 million homes. But they are also receiving Medicaid, what's normally used for what they say impoverished people, mm -hmm. right? Warren Buffett says, you know, uh, he controls everything and owns nothing. So if you organize your affairs in a manner, you're not just giving away your money and you have a prescription for your diagnosis. That's deep. That's deep. We definitely going to peel back the onion on that a little bit more, a little bit later in the conversation. Just a quick, a quick call out. I just want to mention real quick, James, that those of you that had joined the meeting, we are definitely going to save uh, some time towards the end for questions. So please uh, jot your questions down, throw them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to give the opportunity to unmute. So you can ask you can ask your question directly to James or myself. So just want to throw that out there. Keep that in mind as we flow through the conversation. All right. So James, you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> Last or financial, right? Uh, national, doing business nationally right now. Congrats on that. I, I I'm I'm always curious, and you know, and, and for the the aspiring entrepreneurs out there when it comes to startup funding, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to ask you, how did you go about the business of funding your startup? Was it mostly sweat equity? Was it putting up your own capital? Did you solicit outside investors? Take me through how you went about the business of securing startup fund 
for launching your business? So I can talk about how I did it. And I can also talk about a better way to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with myself first. Right. Because I think you can learn something from everybody. Right. You know what to do, and what not to do. So, so here we go. Um, me personally. Yes. Um, I understand Robert Kiyosaki's point of view. You know, there's the uh, cash flow quadrant. Right. And so everybody's either an employee. You're working for somebody. Mm -hmm. You're self-employed. Yeah. You're working for yourself, right? You're a business owner or you're an investor. And so I had to trail through all of those without, without really understanding the bigger picture here. So I can talk about my way, but I think it'd be more beneficial for everybody to understand the, the better ways that are out there, right? Because I, I, I had to grind. I had to save my money. Um, like I said before, I was disabled. So a portion of my, of my retirement funds um, I had to use that to get licensed and certifications and so forth and also take care of my family, right? Well, nowadays, uh, just by somebody, you know, I, in most places, it's about 30, 40 bucks. You go down, uh, you can go online or go to the county, you can do it for yourself. Um, but start an LLC. I'm a big proponent of starting a C corporation. We can talk about that in a moment. Um, real short, a LLC, a S corporation, LLP, they are passed through entities that pass through to your social security number. So now you're paying more taxes in business. But if you start a C corporation, a couple of things happens for you. Okay. First and foremost, you have your C corporation. You give it about six months. You can get a line of credit from the bank. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it, right? You, you just show that you got some money in the bank. You're trying to keep at least uh, $250 inside of your business checking account. You're doing business transactions, boom, 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 boom. But you still are maintaining that $250 inside your business banking account. Guess what? So James, you now have business credit. So James, now you're talking about some of the things that you could have done that you learned along the way that you didn't necessarily do. Uh, so a lot of people can learn from your experience, right? So I did it one way, but now I'm doing it that way. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Okay. Here, here's another, here's an example of why, two examples, why you want to have a C corporation or at minimum start a business, right? So, so here's number one. Number one reason why you will want to start a business is as an individual, if you went to the bank right now to go get a loan, you're capped at twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. It's just this. Any bank, you capped at twenty, thirty thousand dollars. If you got like an eight fifty credit score, they'll probably give you forty five, fifty thousand dollars. But as a business owner, as a business owner, oh, you can get a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, right? If you've been in business two years or more, uh, we just got um, a gentleman uh, with a, um, a clothing boutique where he's able to make his clothing line and, and all of that inside DC. He just got an $850,000 loan, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there, there are many different ways of, of, of getting financing right now. Right now, you can get financing as a business owner, having a C corporation, not just the LLC, the C corporation is better. Um, if you have a C corporation, for example, some of you guys are having car trouble right now. Some people right now, a lot of my clients, um, definitely if you're on, uh, you're having dental issues. Simple, just simple, just taking care of yourself. As a C corporation, you can purchase in to benefit plan, uh, uh, benefit plans that starts day one. So as a business owner, you can start taking care of yourself. You get discounts as a business owner. Why wouldn't you, mm -hmm. right? Here's the third thing that, that I love. You get bigger tax breaks. Everything you do is now a tax write-off. So if you start, if you're thinking about starting a business, I said all of that to say this right here, a business is actually a system. I was listening last night to Warren Buffett talk. Um, he, he was on stage with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and he goes, you know, our businesses run themselves. How can a business run itself? It's a system. So if you are an entrepreneur and you're trying to start up a business, taking all this money from people up under the table is actually not beneficial to you. It's not. <laughs> I don't want you to pay me a couple hundred. No, I want you to put it inside my account. Mm -hmm. Right? The more you put it inside my account, the more I get to write off. And right now, yesterday, um, uh, yesterday was Friday. 
a notice came out for the PPP loans. So the people who were complaining that they were not getting any of the government funds from the $2 trillion that they sent out for small businesses in um, 2020, people like me laughed at people whining and complaining. You know why? Because they were not a bankable business. They were not considered a serious business. So no, the SBA did not approve their loan. Why? Their LLC is going to pass through to them. All the C corporations, they got loans. I want you to think about that for a moment. Mm. Mm. That's deep. That's deep. So we, we definitely going to get more into that here in just a minute, James. Uh, when I start to, when we start to dive deep in, deeper into the specific services um, that you were delving into. But before oh. we do that, James, before we do that, you know, I have to ask, especially as an entrepreneur, uh, it's, it's not all rosy and smooth as an entrepreneur. You know, we, we both know that. And so I, I, I wanted to get into what are some of the, or, or what is one of the biggest either, let's say, financial mistakes or financial hardship that one, a brick wall that you've run into during your entrepreneurial journey? What did that look like? How did you strive and persevere through that brick wall? Biggest financial mistake that I have had to push through. It was that I actually made the mistake three times, not once, but three times. Mm. And in my industry, what people don't understand is how somebody like me gets paid, right? And so I take care of people and after they're all taken care of, after everything's good to go, all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, then I get paid, right? That, then that happens. So there's been three times in my business and it happened a while ago, so I, I can talk about it now. Before, I was not talking about it. Um, where I would get a, I, I'll get a nice paycheck and I wasn't saving. I wasn't saving like my grandma taught me to for, for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. And let's say it like this. I was saving, but I wasn't saving enough. If that makes sense. I was saving. I had an emergency fund, but I wasn't saving enough. And some people say, okay, you just need three to six months of savings. No, you never stop saving. Saving is a way of life. I learned it. It took me three times to get through this. <laughs> and and um, like I say, I like being married. I like my wife. I, I like her a lot. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and to go through that, not once, not, but three times, it's a game changer. So that's why I'm passionate of, of, about people saving, right? Most of my clients is interesting. The wife is the saver. Because women like protection and security, right? And so I learn a lot from my female clients because overwhelmingly, the females have the better credit score. They're saving. They're diligent. They're just saving too conservatively. Mm. And I learned that by working with all my clients, go, oh, okay, now I got it, right? Um, I'll get uh, one more example to that. Uh, I had a client. She worked for Costco. Costco. Worked for Costco for 14 years. She came to me because she was going through a divorce. Uh, I help folks who are going through a divorce uh, just kind of figure some things out in the discovery period. And she saved $1.2 million working at Costco. Amazing. It can be done. Yeah. So those are, those are the mistakes that I made that I quickly, all right, we got to clean this up. We got to clean this up. I got to drink my own Kool-Aid, if you will. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Whew. <laughs> wow. That, that's a big one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing that, James. Uh, definitely saving and, and, and you touched on it. You know, saving should be an ongoing endeavor on your road to investment and building wealth. You know, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be a, a stop point. Totally agree. Yeah. All right. So I want to get into some of the areas that you specialize in with last or financial. Then after that, we're going to jump into some questions. So okay. uh, those of you that are out there, uh, get the questions ready and we're going to open, open up the floor for James. And, and then, uh, but before we do that, 
you you have something that's called the flow to grow pro program flow to grow program tell us about that the flow to grow program is a true cash flow management system that teaches you to manage your cash flow just like the banks do so that you can grow long-term wealth okay is a tried and true system and has actually uh backed by research has been going on for literally over 180 years this is how the bank operates right and so what i've done is i've studied exactly how the banks uh grow their wealth make their money uh based off of our fractional reserve system and based off the fractional reserve system my thought path was hey what if we individually had a fractional reserve system for us that we can grow funds just like the banks do? So just for folks who are not familiar with the fractional reserve system, it works a little bit like this. You are a loaner to the bank. You're not a depositor to the bank. You are a loaner to the bank. As, as you're talking about how uh, if you are a loaner to the bank, then you have to understand that's what makes this whole system possible. It makes it not only legal, but tax deferred and tax free. So now all the money that you're growing, Uncle Sam's hands are not in your pocket. So it works like this. You loan the bank your money. Your bank gives that money to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve sends that back to your bank uh, on a 10 to 1 basis, right? So 10% of that money, it has to stay liquid inside the bank. God forbid you want to zero out your account. But the other 90%, the bank gets to go and collateralize uh, that relationship they have with you, right? Mm -hmm. They get to go sell securities. They get to give loans and so forth. So what if you can do the exact same thing, right? What if you can put your money inside of a product and that company then becomes your reserve and they credit every dollar that you put inside the account. So I'm able to show people a seven to one return, a nine to one return, and in some cases, a 10 to one uh, a return on all the money that you are flowing through your account, right? So now as you're flowing this, uh, these funds through your account, there's a few other things that are part of this program that's that is, it's a system. So most people they deal with debt so you use this flow to grow program as you're flowing money you use your earnings to pay off debt banks don't carry debt they use that excess to pay off their debt how do you think a credit card company can give you three percent back on all your purchases they are flowing money right so now that you're paying off debt we also have something in our flow to grow program called the five-year mortgage you can get a mortgage and have it paid off in five years using cryptocurrency backed real estate. That's something that that's, and what are people's biggest debts? Mortgage. Their mortgage, their shelter, where they're staying at. So if we can minimize that account to just property taxes, insurance and HOA fees, you're good to go, right? But we're not done there, we're not done there. So the third part of the system is when we're showing businesses and individuals how to properly structure their business as well as properly structure their estates. And if you run through this program correctly, I'm going to show you how you can immediately reduce your tax bill by 30%. I don't care who you are. I can reduce your tax bill by 30%. And that's why we're going crazy nationwide because everybody needs to know this. They don't teach you this in school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there's a few other parts to the program, but those are the three high points of the programs. And man, I'm telling you, we are changing people's lives. This is beautiful, man. We're paying off houses. We're getting rid of credit card debts. We're paying off cars. We're putting kids in college. We're showing you how to create a family foundation and use that foundation to put your kids through college. Right. And you get 3% back on all the money that you put your kids through college on. Right. This is the way to structure your finances. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, with the use of correctly aligned cash flow management and products, folks are able to really retire in decency. James, you're talking about something that's near and dear to me, which is building wealth, not only wealth for your, for you and your family, but also generational wealth. 
for a lineage coming up behind you so you can continue to build and compound upon that. Why is that important? Tell us why is that important? Because people are constantly having to start over and over all the time. They have to start. So when a baby is born, okay, it's, 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 it's kind of like this. When a baby is born, it starts on square one. It, it, the baby starts right there at the very beginning. Whereas people who have generational wealth, let's say the Rockefellers, when, they're, when, when their kids are born, their first house is paid for, their college is paid for, their private school tuition is paid for, uh, their first wedding is paid for, right? And all their job consists of is becoming some type of philanthropist and to be a better citizen inside of this crazy world we live in, right? Mm -hmm. So out of all the hard work my mother and father ha have, have worked their, their hands down to the gristle just so I can get a college education, what if I didn't have to start all the way over from square zero? What, what, what if I could start at, you know, let's say the 50 yard line to try to get a touchdown rather than at the zero yard line, right? So it gives everybody a better chance. But but here, here, here's, here's the other thing. The other thing is, is when you have generational wealth, now your, your, your conversations are different. And th 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 this is what I mean. People who are broke, they're always talking about money. People who are rich are always talking about things. But people who are wealthy are always talking about ideas. So think about our, our, our modern day school right now. All the kids are distance learning and so forth. And the kids are, are, are smart, they're picking up. The reason why parents are having a hard time with kids at home right now is because they're talking about things they're not talking about ideas. The kids are not getting to be able to express their ideas. That's the difference. James, wow. So look, you, you, you just, I mean, you just said it all right there in terms of why is building genera generational wealth important. And you, you just hit the nail right on the head that I, I would, you know, I second that it's important so that the next generation isn't starting from square one. It's not starting from square one. You, you're, you're similar to, to this great thing called compound interest. Generational wealth builds upon generation to generation. You know, it, it's a snowball effect. You know, and I think, and, and go, go, going back to what I was saying earlier in our conversation, when I was talking about victim mentality, and you're right, we're all victims in some sense. But if you allow external forces to dictate your circumstances, you take away the power that you have to do anything about it. You know, we... The, the political turmoil, turmoil that's been taking place in this country, right? Regardless of what side you're on, left, right, center, what have you. Here's the thing. Every four to eight years, we're guaranteed to have a new occupant in the White House. <laughs> Period. No matter what. No matter what. <laughs> now, let's say, you know, the average American today lives up to about 75 to 80, 85 years old. Average. So on average, you, you're going to have anywhere from roughly 15 to 20 different presidents occupying the White House. So let me, so, so it, it, here's the news slash, James. If you're banking your future, your wealth, your well-being, or on who occupies the White House and all of these other external factors, you, you, you're done. You can figure it about it. Versus if they take, if they abide by your strategy and your mindset on taking control of their own finances and adopting the mindset of generational wealth, now, now we're getting somewhere, right? What do you think? So, so I try to pride myself to be a, a, a good listener. So, so I want to take your words and I, and I want to just paint a picture real quick, right? So average person lives about, uh, let's say 85 if they're married, they gonna, they're going to live to about age 94. If they're married past age 65, they're going to they're gonna live to 94. But let's just use your numbers, 85. And let's just say people are living at 85 years old, 
and they're making on average about $50,000 a year. That's $4,250,000 over their, their lifespan that uh, minimally that they're going to make. Now, I know between age zero and 15, zero, 18, they may not be working, but over average, over average, that's how much they're going to make. Okay. So if that's how much they're going to make, regardless of who's in the White House, this is what I need everybody to understand. The folks that are in the White House, the folks that are in Congress, the folks that are in the Senate, everything that I'm teaching, they already know about. So when they're clashing and going back and forth and talking about, oh, this law, that law, whatever, whatever, what they're really fussing about is, hey, if we do that, I'm going to lose about a couple million dollars here. If we do that, this investment right here is going to go down. If we do that, I've already promised so-and-so. Well, it doesn't matter to you if you are properly structured, your business and your state, right? Not to get political, but this is the reason why it took so long for them to get Trump's tax returns. This is why Trump only paid $750 in taxes. You can too. Do you know somebody that's going to walk you through that and show you how to do it? Most people don't know who to talk to. Now, that's not information we just go get out and and give, but the importance of having that education beats almost anything that, 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 that you can even comprise of when we're talking about financial wealth and financial health. Boom. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. Now, w- without further ado, I want to jump into, and after the question, definitely, James, uh, we're going to have you give out your information on how anyone can get in touch with you, w- with your business and your services and your expertise. But I want to go ahead and jump into some questions, Q&A. So here's how we're going to do this. We have several people in the meeting. Everyone is on mute. Okay. If you have a question, do me a favor. I want you to type in a t- in the chat box question. Just type question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute you. And my ask is that just make sure that your audio is clear, no background noise, so that you know everyone can hear you clearly. So go ahead. You know, if you have a question, just type in question in the chat box. I'll hit unmute and then we'll go from there. So Questions, questions. I love these questions. Um, uh, prior to, uh, to COVID-19, um, I was always uh, putting together events, educational events. And um, even, even now, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, actually last week, I had somebody ask me to do an event. And they say, well, how much do you charge? I said, I don't charge anything. Thinking is free, right? And people are like, you don't charge for this information? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, um, oh, I see a question. All right, Big A, Big A. I'm, I'm about to unmute you. All right. Well, he, he typed it in. Should, should I just, okay, I, I'll, I'll answer the question. I see you typed it in. Um, if a person wants to get started uh, with you, uh, what they need to do first. Well, uh, we have a streamlined process that all of our clients go through. Um, if you're on this meeting right here, I would request that you reach out to my assistant, Jessica at Laster Financial, or you can email me directly, James at Laster Financial, All right? And then once you email me, you're going to get a response back. And then that response is, is going to clue you into your financial GPS. Even before we talk, you should do this. Um, And the reason why we put people through the financial GPS is is really simple, is that most people can tell me their salary. Most people can tell me what they've saved, but most uh, most people can't tell me what their expenses are. So I need you to go in and do some soul searching, understand your expenses, your salary, and and so forth. And then we'll have a meeting. No, we'll we'll talk about it. It's not a sales meeting because I don't even know if you qualify, right? So it all starts with a discussion. And I will listen intently to see if I can be a resource to you. If I, if I can't, I'll find somebody that can help you. If we can, we'll walk you through that process as well. Basically, can you tell me how to get more information? Um, 
there's interest there in, in, in that growth conversation. Um, uh, she missed the beginning part. So uh, this is how you get plugged in. Several ways to get plugged in. The first way to get plugged in um, is our YouTube channel, All About Others. So uh, click in Laster Financial and go into All About Others. You put that in the search box, um, you'll find us there. Or just click in Flow to Grow. We're the only one there, okay? Um, number two, uh, like us on the Laster Financial uh, on Facebook. Uh, we put out a lot of information there. Uh, we're going to be marketing all of our educational events that are coming up. We wanted to get through the first quarter. Um, another way, like I can say, email us, uh, james at lasterfinancial.com. Uh, if you would like for this conversation to come to you, your nonprofit organization or your business, reach out to events at lasterfinancial.com. Uh, we have a, a wonderful young lady. She, she's our events coordinator. Uh, she'll get us set up for uh, your employ, uh, employee um, uh, benefits director. And here's the best thing. They get SHRM, S-H-R-M certification points by having me come in. So it makes your cost of benefits cheaper at work and you get better benefits, right? Um, and then lastly, by bringing me into the conversation to your business owner or to whoever your boss is, right? I literally have the ability to show them the flow to grow program that will increase your paycheck. It will benefit your business owner to increase your paycheck by using the flow to grow program. So there's many ways for you to get plugged in, just pick one, get started, and we'll walk you through the rest. I like to take this time right here. Um, it's not about me. It's, it's all about others. So for everybody who's listening, I, I do want to talk about Mr. Eric Hudson, right? This, this guy's humble, so I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to spill the beans right here. This, this guy is a master wealth management advisor, right? So for many of you guys, um, you have your money in the market, right? And you may not understand what's going on. The market's going up and down, and you probably are with a, one of those big firms like Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, or whatever, Right? This is one of the guys I'm working with, right? And when he asked me, I was honored. I was like, you're going to ask me, <laughs> right? Uh, so, so that's really good. Um, the, the, the other thing um, that I want to share with everybody is, you know, this is COVID-19 time. We're in, we're in a global pandemic. And it means a lot of things to a lot of people. But for me, I'm seeing things that normal people don't see. Here, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing is that... Uh, the life insurance companies are backed up by 45 to 60 days. Hmm. IRS is backed up 90 days. What does that mean? Right? So when somebody dies, right, and they have property or whatever, they have an estate. And before that estate can cash out, they have to have an EIN number, and that's supplied by the IRS. So if your life insurance policy is supposed to pay out to your estate, but you haven't put in your affairs in order, your family is most likely having to wait 180 days. And on top of that, if somebody in your family, outside of your family contests those results, you can wait to seven years to have that estate released to your family. That's why it makes sense to talk to somebody who understands the big picture. So whether it's me, whether it's, it's, it's Mr. Hudson here, find somebody who's knowledgeable. And it's okay to get a second opinion. I, I have clients that say, you know, I'm going to talk to this guy. Go ahead, talk to him. And then come back and tell me, what. It, let's game plan, let's work together. But look, if you're not doing this now and you have five years remaining, you have five years remaining of all-time low tax brackets right now, there are laws being changed right now that, literally impacts everyone and it impacts your finances, it impacts your taxes and it impacts your way of life. You can protect yourself and your family from that by just having a conversation, knowing where to start. So uh, if I were you, if any of this conversation has compelled you in any way, any shape or any manner, I strongly encourage you. And we talked about diagnosis, right? And prescription, right? At least get a diagnosis. At least get a diagnosis. James, will a diagnosis cost, cost you anything? I, I don't charge for my diagnosis. 
I only charge for my case design. You can thank the state of California for that. <laughs> right. So I, I sit down, I work with folks, and then I create your case design. And your case design, depending on many different factors, your choices and so forth, it can take a couple of weeks. It's worth it. It's worth it. You remember, remember, we're in this conversation. Average person lives 85 years old. And if that 85 year old made $50,000 on average for the rest of their life, they made $4,250,000 over the course of their lifetime. Your job is to make sure that your money outlives you, not you outlive your money. Mm. So yes, either sir. you self prescribe yourself or you go to a doctor and get mm. some help. Your <laughs> choice. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you so much for that, James. You just, uh, you know, shine a very bright light on the importance of having your financial affairs, your estate planning in order, especially during this time where the IRS is is probably the most backed up that has been in, in recent history that I know of anyway, you know, and I, and, and from personal experience, it's, as I'm sure others out there can relate to, you know, I've had grandparents pass and um, and there's been situations where the financial affairs weren't in order. We didn't know where the insurance documents were and so on and so forth. Bickering over how is, who's going to pay for what. You know, it's, it's get your financial affairs in order. Please heed what James is saying right now. Reach out to him. Talk at a minimum. Have a conversation. Have a diagnosis. Okay. And don't put yourself in that predicament. Uh, thank you so much, James. Just one more time, uh, let us know how to get in touch with you um, for your for your services. You can go to lasterfinancial.com. Um, you can uh, reach out to us on Facebook, The Laster Financial uh, on Facebook, All About Others on YouTube. You can call us directly. All of our information and so forth are there. We have folks uh, they're literally coming together in this movement all across the country. Um, in uh, about eight months, uh, our firm will be able, uh, well, actually right now on the five-year mortgage, we're able to support people internationally, which is which is huge. Th th this, this is huge, right? And the biggest portion of this, if you really, really want to help yourself, if you really want to get involved, do what I did. When I was in my darkest moment, when I was disabled, I stopped thinking about James and I started thinking about others, hmm. right? So if you say, okay, no, not me. I'll try this. You know, my sister, she needs it. My aunt, my, my grandparent, try them first, put them through the program. Let it see that it worked. You're just going to be two, three years behind. It's okay. Start thinking about others right now. It's never about you. If it's all about you. It's too small. Wow. James, thank you so much. Such a powerful conversation about, again, your finances in order, generational wealth, managing your taxes, so on and so forth. Get in touch with James. Get in touch with James at a minimum, have a conversation, and, uh, and then go from there. James, thank you. Thank you for everyone that has joined. Uh, we appreciate you. And, you know, we're going to be doing some projects in the future. You already know that. So, uh Thank you, everyone. I love and, uh, you guys. I love I love all of you guys. I love you guys. You guys be well. Take care. Hey, thanks, Mr. Hudson. Thank you so much. Yes, sir.